Professor Dave and Chegg here. We are familiar with the IUPAC rules of nomenclature for naming organic molecules. Now it is time to learn about alkyl halides. So let's take a look at how the presence of halogen substituents influences the naming process. Once again, we will encounter halogens frequently in organic chemistry, and when an alkene has one or more halogens on it, we will refer to it as a haloalkene, or equivalently, an alkyl halide. The good news with these is that we will treat these essentially just like alkyl substituents. We will number the parent chain so as to give the first substituent occurring soonest, whether alkyl or halo. We will simply give halogens a slightly different name when found as a substituent, and those will be fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo groups. And if a substituent occurs at the same position from either side, then we will begin at the end closer to the substituent that has alphabetical priority. Take a look at this molecule. As always, let's identify the parent chain. In this case, that's easy. It's just this 7-carbon straight chain, so this is a heptane. In addition, we will certainly number from left to right, because we have two substituents occurring on carbon 1, as opposed to the other way, which would give the first substituent on carbon 3. Now it's time to list the substituents. Alphabetically, it's B for bromo first, so that will be 1,1-dibromo. Remember that we ignore the D in dibromo, it's still just B for bromo. Next is 4-chloro, since that starts with C. And last is 5-fluoro, as that's last alphabetically. That gives us 1,1-dibromo, 4-chloro, 5-fluoro heptane. So really, this is no different than what we learned for alkyl substituents. And once again, halogens and alkyl groups have equal priority. If we mix them up, none of the rules will change. Turning this chloro group into a methyl group, the only difference is that we have to put M for methyl last, after F for fluoro, and that will instead give us 1,1-dibromo, 5-fluoro, 4-methylheptane. So we can clearly see how halogen functional groups integrate seamlessly into the rules we already know. We should also note that sometimes we refer to small alkyl halides by other names, so iodomethane is sometimes called methyl iodide. Bromocyclohexane might sometimes be called cyclohexyl bromide that sort of thing. The other thing we should discuss is that halogens increase in size going down the halogen group from fluorine to iodine, so the corresponding carbon halogen bonds must also get longer as we go down the group to accommodate the larger atoms. As bonds get longer, they also get weaker, so a carbon iodine bond is much weaker than a carbon fluorine bond due to both length and differing polarity. But of course, in general, the carbon-halogen bond will always be polar, with a partial positive charge on the less electronegative carbon and a partial negative charge on the halogen, and this will strongly influence the type of chemistry that occurs at this functional group. With that, we have a better understanding of alkyl halides in terms of how to name them and also the properties of the carbon-halogen bond. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.